Last but not least, concept three notes, we're going to be talking about reaction kinetics, um, also known as chemical kinetics. This is just the area in chemistry that studies reaction rates and mechanisms. So it's not like entirely congruent with thermochemistry, but I mean, everything in chemistry is related. And so I really could have done this with you guys back in unit five, chemical reactions, but that unit was already such a doozy, I decided to save it um, for here. But you will see some things that are gonna be reminiscent of that and some of the things we saw in our solutions unit. So hopefully this is a nice kind of like summary concept to end the year on. So these will be short and sweet. So like we have said in several previous units and we also said back in concept two, reactions will only happen if reacting particles collide and they need to have a certain quantity of collisions in a given time, and they need to collide with enough energy. Um, like we said, they need enough force to actually cause a change to occur, and they need to collide with the right orientation in order for these reactions to happen. So this is kind of all in that collision theory. And something we will see to kind of bring in what we talked about at the end of Concept 2 Notes is that spontaneous reactions that happen like all on their own they occur if energy is going to decrease. So we're looking for the least enthalpy here. And then they'll occur if disorder increases. So there's we're looking for the greatest possible entropy, okay? And so because of this, we tend to see that exothermic reactions are more spontaneous than endothermic because of that energy decrease. But all that to say, regardless of like spontaneity, all reactions can occur at different rates, and that is impacted by different factors. So reaction rate is just measured by looking at the, it's basically how fast reactions happening, and we measure it by looking at a change in the concentration of reactants per unit of time or looking at a change in the concentration of products per unit time. I'm not going to have you calculate this at all, but I just wanted to make you aware of that. What I care about is you understanding how different factors affect reaction rate. So there's a lot that goes into it. We're just going to kind of look at a few here. So first, the nature of reactants will affect the reaction rate. Substances have properties that impact whether or not they will react with other substances, okay? So that's just a general topic. We're not going to get into it much. But like, for example, under certain conditions, hydrogen will react really aggressively with chlorine, but weakly with nitrogen. So just kind of, it depends, like different, you know, atoms of different elements, you know, react to each other differently or, um, you know, relate to each other differently. So just the nature of reactants in general is going to affect your rate. So kind of as we go through the rest of these, we're going to see patterns. Um, but again, just think of these as more like generalizations. There's always exceptions, okay? Okay. So temperature, this is something that affects reaction rate. In general, again, remember these are all generalizations. An increase in temperature, well, we know that's a measurement. Incre higher temperature means more kinetic energy. So um, if we see an increase in temperature, that means there's more kinetic energy in the particles, and thus they're moving more. And so we should see more collisions happening and thus a greater reaction rate. Because remember, back to the previous slide, they have to collide, and they have to collide with a certain frequency, like a certain amount of times. Um, and so if we're having more collisions, we should see a greater reaction rate. So increasing temperature increases reaction rate. Another thing we see affect reaction rate is concentration. So again, in general, the higher the concentration, the more of your reactants, the more particles there are in a given space. So the more likely naturally that they're gonna collide with each other and thus hopefully react, which would also increase the reaction rate. Um, another one factor I wanna mention here that I didn't type into the notes, but is pressure. And pressure can impact the rate of reactions only involving gases because if we increase the pressure of gases, it's gonna squish them together and that increases the concentration of gases and gas particles in a given volume, which thus means they would hopefully collide more, which would increase the rate. So it's kind of um, related to concentration, which is why I wanna mention that here. Another factor that affects reaction rate is surface area. So the greater the surface area you have, the more space there is for particles to come into contact with each other and potentially react and thus increasing the rate. So if I decrease particle size, I'm increasing the surface area, which means there's more space for them when they're colliding and hopefully reacting. 
Um, we saw this back in our solutions unit when we looked at a sugar cube versus granulated sugar. The granulated sugar had a smaller particle size. It had more surface area, so it was faster than the cube sugar. Um, another thing we saw back in that solutions unit, if you did that with me, in, and that's similar to surface area, is um, how agitation can impact rate, basically just stirring it because it has a similar effect um, to surface area in that when you're stirring, you're exposing fresh reactant to other reactant and thus hopefully causing more collisions. Like when we have that greater surface area, there's more exposure of the reactants to each other. Okay, last two I want to touch on with you. Um, first is the presence of a catalyst, which I introduced to you in concept two. A catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of the reaction without being consumed by the reaction or, you know, impacting what the reactants and products are. Like you wouldn't write a catalyst as a reactant or a product in a chemical equation. But what it does is it increases the rate, it makes it happen faster by providing an alternative energy pathway that lowers activation energy. We see the catalyst here in red. It's less than what would be without it. So it can make the reaction happen faster because we don't have to absorb as much energy to make it go. And typically we see that catalysts can actually be reusable um, and they don't impact the nature of the reactants and products again. Now, catalysts don't make reactions happen that wouldn't already happen, okay? Um, they just lower the threshold of energy needed to actually get the reaction going. Um, now, another thing kind of the opposite of a catalyst we see is the presence of an inhibitor. So an inhibitor is a substance that actually will bind to a catalyst and kind of block it, and thus it'll slow down the reaction rate by blocking it. Now, a an, an, just like a catalyst, an inhibitor isn't going to completely stop a reaction. It's just going to slow it down. Okay, and we're going to investigate all of these different factors um, in a lab that's a little simulation about a reaction, which I think is really fun. It's going to help you really understand all of these factors and how they affect reaction rate. And that's our concept three notes on reaction kinetics. And that's our last video in the chemistry curriculum.